Welcome back to Gothic Homemaking. It is Christmas time here at the Lair of Voltaire. Well, it's spooky Christmas time. That's exciting, isn't it? You know what else is exciting? This is the very first year that I'm ever putting up a Christmas tree in the Lair of Voltaire. So, of course, I've been out hunting for ornaments, spooky ornaments. And I gotta tell you, they're quite hard to find. So I just figured I'd be going to one of the stores and buying some regular ones and doing a DIY project and making my own macabre ornaments. I guess you could say for Christmas what I want more than anything else is to put up a spooky tree and have it covered in elegantly macabre gothic ornaments. What do you want for Christmas, Orville? Wow, that's rough. You know what else is rough? The Christmas decorations at Dollar Tree. <laughs> no, seriously, they're pretty rough. I went there in the hopes of buying some of their inexpensive, low-quality decorations and transforming them into spooky, dark, elegant ornaments worthy of Jack Skellington's Christmas tree. And this is how that went. Take a look. The blown out lights on the Dollar Tree sign were an indication that everything inside was probably not top quality. And sure enough, I found that a lot of the ornaments were broken or in disrepair. Nonetheless, I had a great idea for what to do with this snowman. This reindeer was also broken, but I can give it new life on my island of misfit toys. Now you can't have a Christmas tree without balls, and Dollar Tree had the biggest balls of them all! I also found these small ones, and this shape gave me a great idea. Can you guess what I'm going to do with them? These clear DIY ornaments were really novel, but what to put in them? And I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with these snowflakes, but I knew I'd find a use for them. And that's when I ran into this glittery church. Now those of you who have seen my episode, Black Metal Church Nightlight, know that I know how to make a church creepy. So I picked up one of those as well. Now, I wasn't exactly hearing church bells for this item, but I really did like the sculpting. I think we can do better on the color, though. And these bells were the only ornaments that I felt were ready to go on my tree. Of course, I picked up some hooks on the way out, and the transformation was ready to begin. Back at the lab, I pulled out one of my little snowmen, and I pulled off all of the details, which sadly is extremely easy to do with Dollar Tree decorations. Next, I pulled out some acrylic paint and I touched up the damaged parts. And then I flipped it over and I did the same on the back. With a Sharpie, I drew the face of a beloved Halloween character who had more than just a passing fascination with Christmas time. This year, Christmas will be ours! Last Halloween, I bought this wreath at Joann's, and it had these little bats on it that I wasn't exactly crazy about, but I've just found a purpose for them. So I tore one off, And before it could take flight, I'd need to touch up the back. Next, I made a slit under Jack Skellington's chin. And I inserted my glittery bat. And now I have a very dapper King of Halloween. Now, these were the small balls I found. Can you guess what I'm going to make with them? I'll give you a hint. I painted them with a dark orange. Next, I mixed up a lighter color orange and I dry brushed that over these shapes to make it more realistic and give it more depth. And in time, I had the most ubiquitous symbol of Halloween, the pumpkin. But everybody knows it isn't really Halloween until you turn the pumpkins into jack-o'-lanterns. And I did exactly that with a Sharpie. I also added vines to the top for good measure. Now that's much better, isn't it? 
Next, I decided to make more jack-o'-lanterns out of the silver balls, just for a little bit of contrast. Now that's quite a pumpkin patch. Now, as for my reindeer, the first step would be to remove all of the accoutrements, which in the case of these Dollar Tree decorations is sadly very easy to do. Now, as you can see, this reindeer is covered in glitter. And we want to remove most of that. So to that end, I got a wire brush and I started to scrape off as much of the glitter as I could. Next, I took it outside and I painted it black with Krylon Black Lacquer Spray Paint. Now, I'm going to be adding some glitter of my own. So to that end, I covered the reindeer in Mod Podge. While it was nice and wet, I pulled out my glitter and a pan, and then you simply sprinkle the glitter over the figure. I used hairspray in order to keep the glitter from falling off. This is a beautiful Halloween ribbon I picked up at Joanne. But of course you could use Dollar Tree ribbon or ribbon from anywhere in fact. With this ribbon I would be tying it around the neck to make a bow and I glued it in place with some hot glue and then cut it to size. Now this is starting to look like something, but reindeer need antlers. So I went back to that spooky reef, I cut myself a sprig. Next, with a sharp awl, I performed a little trepanation on the skull of this reindeer. That's gonna leave a mark. And then I simply super glued the antlers in place. And here's my finished spooky reindeer. Fly, Robert Smith, fly! Next up came the church, which needless to say, is a little too disco for my taste. So, once again, I set about to remove as much of the glitter as I could with a wire brush. Then I took it outside and I painted it black. Now, truth be told, this ornament is good to go as is, but of course, we're gonna kick it up a notch using a technique we use a lot here on the show. I'm gonna use silver brush and leaf and dry brush it onto the ornament to really bring out the details. Now, a while back, somebody gave me these little Jolly Roger metal ornaments, and I think we could use that to dress this church up a little bit. You know, so people know who goes to this church, which is dead people or pirates or, I don't know, maybe dead pirates. Nonetheless, another ornament finished. Now it comes time for the bells. And for this one, we are also going to use our technique of painting them black. And dry brushing some silver brush and leaf to bring out the details. That looks better already. Now I'm using some velvet ribbon, but honestly, you could use any kind of cord or shoelaces. But the point is, you want to string two of the bells together. Now this is some leftover trim that I had from one of my projects, and I'm gonna use that to embellish this ornament. To that end, I place it on a piece of black foam core, and I cut the foam core down to a piece that's about double the width of the ribbon. There's my cut foam core there, and this is what it's replacing. Next, we simply glue the trim to the foam core like so. Now I also happen to have this beautiful white ribbon, which we're gonna add as well. Just add some glue, glue that on under the black ribbon, and now it's starting to look like a really pretty garter. Now we add our bells, and we glue the cords in place. And next, we add some glue, and fold the remaining ribbon over. And then we do the same with the white ribbon. And now it looks lovely. Once again, it was back to the reef where I cut off a little sprig. 
and we're just going to glue that on as a bit of decoration. I'm going to add another one of my Jolly Rogers, and hell's bells, another ornament is ready for my spooky tree. Now to fill our hollow DIY globes, what says Halloween louder than candy corn? I used the cap of the spray paint as a base, took off the lid, and simply started to deposit my candy corns into the globe. In time it was full and looked like this. Mayumi suggested that they might look better half filled. She also suggested the use of these beautiful black ribbons. A lovely Halloween touch for our spooky Christmas tree. And now it was time for the main event, the Christmas balls. I took my balls outside and painted them black. This one has a shiny finish because I used Krylon black lacquer spray paint. This one I painted using Rust-Oleum 2X Ultra Cover, so it has a matte to satin finish. And I'll be decorating them with a variety of ribbons and trim that I have left over from other projects. I placed my ball into a cup, which makes it easier to work with. And then we're gonna start with some velvet ribbon. I cut some velvet ribbon, put some hot glue on it, and wrapped it around the center of the ball, like so. Next, I added some of that gorgeous white trim over the black ribbon. And now I found the perfect use for these snowflakes. I took one outside and painted it black. And next, I simply glued it to the center of this ball. Well, that's looking pretty great. But after the fact, it occurred to me that it might look better with some silver leaf. So I brushed some on. And of course, I added one of my little Jolly Rogers. And there is my first finished Christmas ball. Moving on to the next one, I once again cut some velvet ribbon and glued it to the center of the ball. For variety, on this one I used this tassel trim left over from one of my projects. And I glued that on as well. And that's how I made the bastard love child of an Empire interrogation droid and a flapper from the 20s. Now this time I will be adorning it with some artificial black leaves. These are from a dollar store and they're really very chintzy, but I'm gonna do something to them to make them look really luxurious. Once again, I pulled out the Mod Podge, painted it on my leaves, and then I sprinkled them with this black glitter. Now they really look majestic. And now all I have to do is glue it onto the ball without burning myself. Once again, I reached for a snowflake, but this time I decided to put the silver leaf on without painting it black, just for a little variety. Now it's shiny, and I think I'll glue it on this ball, you see. C'est la vie. It's so shiny. And once again, I added Jolly Roger to pirate things up a bit. And now I've got another gorgeous ornament for my tree. And at long last, we get to the bells, the only ornament I bought at Dollar Tree that I thought needed no augmentation at all. And that bell means that we're done, and it's time to start decorating our tree. And here you have it. And at long last, here are my ornaments on my Christmas tree. Black and orange, yellow and silver, all come together really popping on this white tree to create a nearly Nightmare Before Christmas inspired look. I think it's very sleek, and elegant. It certainly got a touch of Halloween, and more than anything, it has a truly gothic look. And this is what it looks like lit up. Isn't that just lovely? I hope you've enjoyed this DIY episode where I've turned the mundane into the macabre. That's not even my finished Christmas tree. I have a very special theme for my first ever spooky Christmas tree, and I'm going to reveal that to you in an upcoming episode of Gothic Homemaking. In the meanwhile, 
help me with something. As a monster kid, I've called Christmas Creepmas, Creepy Christmas, Gothmas, Spooky Christmas. I even heard someone recently call it Navi Darks, and as a Latino, I found that hilarious. What do you think is the best name for our creepy Christmas season? What are we all gonna call this as we head into the season of Wither? Let me know in the comments below, and if you come up with a new name, even better. Until then, I look forward to seeing you right here on Gothic Homemaking.